according to Newsweek reports, um, indicate that small businesses, while exactly what you're talking about, Brother Mac, small businesses were closing while large industries and corporations were thriving in the pandemic. And according to Newsweek, between February and April of 2020, the number of active business owners declined by 3.3 million. According to one study in June of 2021, there were 37 or currently 37 percent less small businesses in the United States than just one year earlier. And when you look at the opposite side of that spectrum, you know, as much as politicians like to talk about we're doing this for small businesses. That's right. Um, and the PPP loan, I get that was there. But the, the proof is in the numbers. That's right. And, and, and again, think about. You know, when I tell you about that, those trillions of dollars that was being artificially injected into the community, into the economy by the Federal Reserves and the federal government, who do you think was getting that money? Now, they want to talk to you that we we had these small business loans, we had the PPP loans. Well, if you go back and remember, it was very difficult for people. And, and look who was getting you had you had Ivy League schools like Harvard that was getting P, applying for PPP loans and getting them. Harvard. Mm. Harvard has an endowment that would rival some countries. You understand what I'm saying? But mm. but, but mm. the people with money had their big lawyers going in, applying for the PPP loans and getting those loans. So, again, this is why we have to understand why this economy was doing so good, because the United States government, uh, you know, in concert with the Federal Reserve, we're one of the largest banks in the world. And trust and believe they were artificially inducing this money. And when I say artificially, what I mean is because of the unusual circumstances of a pandemic, it was one of two things. You either going to sit back and let this economy collapse. And, and, and when I when I tell you what happened, I'm not saying that I don't agree with what the Federal Reserve did, because trust and believe, none of us lived through the Great Depression of 1929 That's right. when they That's had right. soup lines and, and folks had lost everything. Trust and believe, if we didn't have those economic minds doing something to keep this economy rolling, and that pandemic hit, we would have saw times that would be unimaginable. So, oh, yeah. so oh, yeah. this this infusion of cash that they did to keep things going, the stimulus packages, the PPP loans, these are all part of why it's kind of good to be in America because they did these things. But but there ha there are consequences to it, and and well, keeping yeah. those interest rates down at zero for so long is part of what allowed inflation to get out of control. Go ahead, Ben. Well, the 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 other consequences to it are, is is well, this is my question, uh, or at least my observation is that while all that money, the quantitative easing dollars, were flooding the economy uh, to the point of where now the opposite side is being argued, like you said, inflation. Everyone's talking about inflation. Um, the majority, the vast, the, the 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 lion's share of that money did not go to the individual worker, the essential worker, the people who the for for an economy that is seventy five percent consumer driven, according to uh, most studies, this is an overwhelmingly consumer driven economy. They sure could have put a lot of more of that money in the hands of consumers and still gotten a good result because, as you said, when that stimulus package hit. Americans went out and spent. Um, so wouldn't it make sense for all this money that's going around? Why aren't they writing more stimulus checks directly into the hands of people who, one, need them, who, two, could have sheltered in place if they didn't have to go out and, you know, drive a bus or drive Uber to make a living? And three, uh, well, we'll just start with those two. Like here, here, here's the situation. There's money, but it's not getting to the people who need it the most, not at the levels that they need it. <clears throat> yeah, let me make sure that let me try to give us all an example that we can relate to as to, to what you're speaking. There was a big go back and, and look at the amount of money that was given to the airline industry. Mm. Right. Under these PPP loans, you know, the airline industry had to agree that if they took these incredible, incredible bailouts, if they took this money, that they would have to guarantee the employment of all of their people. For a certain period of time. The, the airlines took this money. And when they took this money, that's when you heard Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders and others saying, the last time we had a situation like this, case in point, the subprime mortgage, when they that's when they, the they, they was giving loans to anybody it, to, to buy any house you wanted to. You could make, be making $30,000 a year and they're giving you loans to buy a $800,000 home. <laughs> 
it was they, wild they like that back then. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. so when the subprime mortgage, when the house of cards fell apart, and now you heard the term too big to fail, now they decided let's give the big corporations, let's bail them out again. And when they gave them the bailout money that was supposed to save them, what the companies did was they gave their CEOs huge bonuses. They started doing stock buyback to protect their investors. They did everything criminal, greedy, and, and, and I'm not going to call it criminal, but they did everything that, that, that would embody greed that you could do. So now when these loans came out, that's where you heard Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders and others saying, don't take this money and start giving yourself big bonuses. All the executives, the CEOs, giving yourself big bonuses. Don't use the money to start buying back stock so that it makes your stock prices go up and your investors happy. Do the right thing to save your companies so that we can keep our economy going. Make sure and guarantee that these workers are still going to be employed. Mm. So there was a time frame that they had on these. And as soon as that time frame elapsed, all of the airlines started talking about layoffs and doing the, the likes. Did they give bonuses? Trust and believe. Go back. And, and here's my problem with situations like that. America wants to say uh, it, it's capitalism when they make their money. You know, the big companies say, hey, we took the risk. We made the money. We ought to enjoy the lion's share. But when their asses get in trouble. They now forget about capitalism and they want to embrace socialism. Oh, yeah. They want to That's enjoy true. the profits when they make them. But when the debt comes, they That's want it. us, society, to pay their debt. That's that right. is my That's problem. Right. Don't enjoy the lion's share and call it capitalism and then want to embrace for your debt, me to pay it off and then call it socialism. It's something I heard um, uh I used to love Randy Rhodes, uh, radio host, and she's just always say it like this. They want to capitalize the profits and socialize the losses. And I think yeah, that absolutely. is probably the clearest way of understanding. Correct. Yeah. Of what's happening around us. 